Hello again, everyone, and for the final time in 2017, welcome to Oklahoma Sports Scene, presented by Bricktown Brewery, with the Hall of Famer, Gil Cloud, and the Hall of Famer, J.B. Haney, and the Hall of Famer, Chris Lincoln. Uh, that's <laughs> later in the show and stuff. Welcome. Got a great show lineup for you, Coach, and well, you can't get much bigger than the king himself, Barry Switch, will be here. We're looking forward to, to seeing Barry here today. I think it's really uh, fantastic. Uh, you know, we had Pat Jones last week. Uh, Barry Switzer, you know, we, and we, we've got some great people that have come on the show, but Barry's got some stories that I'm sure will stop the clock today. And honoring high school football and state championships just recently completed, Brad Caleb, what a job he did at the Booker T. Washington, J.B. You know, really, when you went back and followed the Booker T. Washington Hornets, when they started the very first game back here after they came back from Louisiana, at that point on, I think you could tell that they were headed for a gold ball. And we're excited to have Dale Day from Remington Park. He's going to wrap up the recently completed Thoroughbred Racing Season. And that's quite a lineup of guests for you. You know you're going to enjoy it here on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Also on the show lineup, we're glad to have with us Mick Wilson. He is the tournament director of Oklahoma's longest running high school basketball tournament. It is the 53rd Tournament of Champions. Coming up the end of December at the ORU Navy Center. Mick, welcome. And it looks like another great event. Well, we're excited about uh, another great lineup. It's just... Uh, this thing just is self-perpetuating. It just keeps moving, and we keep adding better teams and better teams each year, and uh, this year's lineup will be no different. I mean, uh, excited to be here today and talk about it. Gil, you know, give us a bit of the history of this event. Well, it started uh, at the Memorial High School. Doug Duggar was the athletic director at Memorial, good friend of mine, was actually my supervising teacher when I did my student teaching at Memorial. And, but in 1966, he started the tournament. And it started out just as the Memorial Invitational. But after it morphed for about five years and it continued on, they said, you know, we really need to make this special. It really needs to be a, a, a special tournament. And one of the things they came up with was the David and Goliath theory, where in the first round, the big school plays the small school. And, uh, and it's been that way ever since. And, that's why, and you'll see, uh, as Mick goes through the bracket today with the boys and girls, uh, that it'll be in the first round, it'll be big versus little, and then we see what happens after that. We've had teams that come in here and they know, and one of the things about the Tournament of Champions that's very difficult for us to really uh, explain, we know that there'll be a team that'll be 0-3, and, and we know there'll be a team that'll be 3-0. and but not necessarily will that mean how they'll end up because we've had 0-3 teams win the state championship because the tournament field is so tough. JB, I'd have to assume in your coaching days you took part in Tournament of Champions. I was in the very first Tournament of Champions in 19, what a surprise. 1966. <laughs> I was coaching at Seminole. We came in with one of the ranked teams in class. I think we were 2A at that time. And then a little school came along and uh, just whipped us like a dog. <laughs> and that's what made the tournament so great, and it will be here forever. Well, let's take a look at the brackets. First start with the, the girls, the ladies' teams that have been invited. Well, we're going with uh, Owasso in 6A, Holland Hall in 3A, Westmore 6A, Sealing Class A, Sand Spring 6A, uh, Victor Christian 4A, Tahlequah 5A, and Muldrow 4A. What are some of the highlights uh, of that field? Well, I think uh, one, Sand Springs is number one in 6A right now, and uh, I don't think they have a senior on their squad. So uh, we'll probably be taking a hard, long look at them again for next year. But uh, they're a really good team. I got a chance here to watch them uh, a couple of weeks ago over in the Bishop Kelly tournament. Uh, played really, really well. I tell you, the team that uh, everyone probably didn't want to play was Sealing, who's been uh, state champions the last two years in Class A and are again number one this year. Um, they've got the Gore sisters that are really good players. But if you remember right, Chris, uh, two years ago they beat East Central in the first round and not only beat them, beat them handily. So uh, Sealing will bring a, a really good competitive team. And, and the good thing about this is it doesn't matter whether you're 6A or Class A, you just need five. And five good players uh, equalize a lot of things when you're just going five against five. So uh, there's some good matchups, some good teams. Uh, Taylor Collins from Muldrow will be uh, one of the really good players. And, of course, Gabby, Gabby Gregory at uh, Holland Hall is one of the leading scorers in the state of Oklahoma right now. And she's a, she's a really good player. J.B., you've got to be impressed with the growth, especially of girls' basketball. You remember back in the days when they couldn't go past half court. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do remember those three on three. And, and you know, th this is the greatest thing about the Tournament of Champions, bringing the girls in, starting to play at 9 o'clock in the morning. I'll be very honest. I was on a committee, and I wasn't too uh, excited about that, but I was wrong. That has been the best thing that's happened 
to the Tournament of Champions. This is the girls, if you don't believe me, go out there at 9 o'clock in the morning on the first day and look at the 2,500, 3,000 people that are watching whoever plays. Doesn't make any worse, boys or girls. Gail, a great facility too at Oral Roberts University. What a thrill for those kids to play in the Maybe Center. You know, the Maybe Center folks are outstanding for Tony Winters and his crew. Uh, matter of fact, I talked to Mike Carter today. Uh, they're excited about the tournament again being out there. It's, it's a tremendous venue because that's where 5 and 6A play the state championship. So it, we never have any trouble with 5 and 6A teams wanting to come to Tournament of Champions because it gives them an opportunity to play in that facility. But our smaller schools who don't look at facilities like that on a common basis, that is a fantastic uh, experience for them to come in and, and be a part of the Tournament of Champions. And we don't want to forget it's free parking. Free parking, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Mick, talk about the boys bracket now, and of course they mix in with the girls, uh, one girls, one boys game and stuff, and it, but eight games uh, each day, it's amazing. Absolutely, and one thing I will tell you, Chris, that I couldn't call this year in girls, in the, on the girls bracket, I really can't look at it and tell you who I think is going to win. I mean, wow. it's, it's literally that wide open. I mean, I think uh, any of those teams have a, have a good shot. It's just going to depend on how well they're playing those three days after Christmas. So on the boys side, uh, we're going to open up uh, the top part of the bracket with Memorial and Sperry. Midwest City and Wright City, Carl Albert and Kingston, and Booker T. Washington and Ringwood. And one thing I'm really proud of is I look through the rankings that we currently have, uh, five of the eight teams are all ranked number one in their classification. So I think it's gonna make for a really interesting uh, uh, matchup. Uh, the other thing I'm really excited about is we've got some size this year. Uh, we've had a lot of college coaches, Division One coaches already call and want to know what the schedule is because Ringwood features uh, a young man that's uh, 6'10". Kingston brings in two guys that are 6'11 and 6'9". And then, of course, uh, Memorial has the twins that are both 6'8". So it's probably the most size we've had in the Tournament of Champions in years. Uh, a lot of really, really recruitable players that are going to have a chance to play at the next level. All these to championship night on the 29th. Yes, the 29th and uh, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8.30 for the uh, boys game and, of course, 7 for the girls. Coach, it's uh, always been a popular event. And uh, how about tickets? Tickets, you know, you go online, maybecenter.com, and they actually have a page for the Tournament of Champions. You can go on and you can pre-buy your tickets. Uh, we have an all-sessions ticket, which is $40, and that saves you $20. We have uh, two sessions a day for three days or six sessions, and it's $10 a seat for those. But if you do the $40, you'll save the 20 Otherwise, you can come anytime for the $10 a session. That's four games in each session. We clear the arena after the first session each day. And I got to tell you, Thursday night, if you're looking at some great basketball, the semifinal rounds, Thursday afternoon and evening are going to be outstanding. I'll be, it'll be some of the best basketball in the state of Oklahoma. There's no question. Mick, thanks so much for being here. Sure appreciate it. As the Director of Tournament Champions, we've got something for him, right, Coach? You know, we always do, Mick, and this is a $25 gift certificate for Bricktown Brewery. Well, I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. And looks like I've got dinner fixed already for, for this evening. <laughs> or we can go to lunch tomorrow. That's right. Well, that, that works as well. <laughs> Thank you, Mick. Great job. Gil's buying tomorrow, That's by the right. way. <laughs> 53rd Terminal Champions, December 27th through the 29th at the ORU Maybe Center. And of course, this show brought to you by Bricktown Brewery. And I've got a gift card, too, but I can just show mine because I just want to tell you about it. Here's your chance to get your Bricktown Brewery gift card. That's a great Christmas gift. And they've got a special right now. If you purchase a $25 gift card, you'll receive a $5 bounce back. Or if you like, Gil Cloud, who buys a lot of gift cards. You may get a $1,000 gift card purchase, and Gil, you can get $200 back in uh, bounce backs there from Bricktown Brewery. Bricktown Brewery in Oklahoma, Kansas, Texas, and Kansas since 1992. Local craft beer and food that surprises and delights, and the best way to celebrate is with a gift card. Coming up back with more, including King, Barry Switzer, next on Oklahoma Sports Scene. Get employee pricing right now at Route 66 Chevrolet. That's right. Get employee pricing on the 2017 Chevy Colorado, Suburban, Traverse, and even the Silverado and Tahoe. Employee pricing on all 2017 models. And that's not all. Get 20% off the Chevy Cruze, Sonic, and Spark or get 0% for 72 months. Jim Glover Chevrolet is now Route 66 Chevrolet, I-44 Memorial, or Route66Chevy.com. The holidays are here. Enjoy a taste of the season with the new holiday sandwich at Billy Sims Barbecue. Fresh cut turkey, slow smoked on site each day, then piled high with savory cornbread dressing and Billy Sims signature cranberry Q sauce. Available for a limited time at Billy Sims Barbecue. The holidays are here. Enjoy a taste of the season right now. 
with the new holiday sandwich at Billy Sims Barbecue. The Bricktown Brewery's Oklahoma sports scene. Proud to have with us coach himself, Barry Switzer, of course, the legendary coach of the Oklahoma Sooners and the Dallas Cowboys. Barry, this is like old times for you and me back in, oh gosh, 1974 we were doing shows together? Before that. Oh, God. Is that my camera over there? <laughs> Look at that. Uh, yeah. Hey, see, he's already got a thing there. Again. No, I know. you know, we, yeah. we did, you, you and I in the lace school did the playback show. That's right. Chuck, yeah, sure Chuck did. Fairbanks was head coach yeah. in 1972, so we were doing... Uh, he became a head coach in uh, 69, and he didn't want to do the playback show. So remember, we, sure, we had right. Tom Good Game as general manager. And you Channel 8 here. doing sports, KTL yeah. TV. And Larry Lace by Hayes Lake on the station. That's right. They flew me over every morning. Well, that's when I was, became a head coach. But Lace, well, I had to drive over and do a damn playback <laughs> show for it. <laughs> <laughs> we, but we, he did the defense. I did the offense, and it was a lot of fun. But That, that was a great recruiting tool for you because uh, Tom Goodgame would buy stations in areas you were looking at key players. Well, yeah, but you bet. That's back when cable was in its infancy, and yeah. you had to pay to get on cable. Right. You, you, you were competing against all these preachers out there. These guys, <laughs> send me all your money. <laughs> no, I'm serious. We're, yeah, we're, we were right, having to sure. buy. I was having to have a inner circle. I called it an inner circle group put together and having to go out in Texas, you know, just to buy the markets yeah. in Texas where high school football players were and make sure my playback show, playback show was shown down there. So, but it was a different era, a different yeah. time. And they paid the coaches a hell of a lot more than they paid me <laughs> than we were making that day for all this. Amazing. Uh, okay. Well, now you were talking a long time ago with him. Now I want to go back about 10 years before that, when what well, we were talking about a while ago when, with uh, Coach Roberts from NEOA and right. and all of the coaches that came up there. And I tell you, you not only did you learn a lot of football, but you learned a lot of what? Life, Life lessons. <laughs> <laughs> Keep, That's hey, careful. Stay out of poker games. Yeah. <laughs> That's been the first lesson you ought to learn with Goose Mahanes and Jack Rusher and those guys. But that was, I did that when I was at Arkansas. I was coaching yes. Coach Broyles and, and the Bill Pace and I, Murr Johnson, would come over from Arkansas. And uh, this was in the 64 and 5 and along there. Arkansas was having a great run at that time when they won their national championship. We were won about 22 in a row. And so we were going over to Red Robinson's, you know, any old camps and all, and all we loved it because we recruited Oklahoma heavily. And, and uh, so <clears throat> I remember that uh, uh, Red, uh, you know, we, you never, he never came around much. Red was smart enough not to show up too much around there. It was just all his assistants and all the coaches you got to know. But when we came over to Oklahoma in 66, we just continued, but we were representing Oklahoma now, and McKenzie sent us up there. So, because Jim was coming over too when he was uh, at Arkansas. So, it was a great transition, and we started early on, like JV said. What do you think about the changes, uh, Barry, in uh, college football? Good, bad, indifferent? Well, which ones you want to start with? Talk about, about money. Yeah, salaries. Oh, first, salaries? <laughs> yeah, well, what, Jimbo first, gets well, here, 75 here, first million. Of all, you know, in my era, we had to create our own talent fees. You know, I had to go out and produce my own shows. I had to go get my own sponsors. I had to put, put everything together myself for when I became a head coach because they only paid me. My first year, I made $24,000 as a head coach. First three years. And uh, I, no, the second year they raised me, we won undefeated the first year. So next year we, we won two national championships back to back with 32 well, one, one but two. I was only making $32,000 a year. After two national championships? After two national but, wow. but that, but, but, if, and, and we were on probation, so therefore I didn't get that 13th month salary, so I didn't get the damn bonus because we didn't go to a bowl game. And Joe Washington didn't win a Heisman because he wasn't on national television because we were the best team in the last Sports Illustrated that no one's seen. And Archie gets him too. And I saw Archie last week at the Heisman, and I think about that every time I see him. How fortunate he was! They didn't get to see little Joe, <laughs> but fourth player picked in the draft. But you know, uh, it was a great time though. We had to go out and produce our own shows and TV, you know, deals. And I got my own sponsors. Lee Allen Smith helped me tremendously, and and uh, you know, we made it a, a, a good job then. But we had to do it ourselves. But but back if you could make eight, nine, ten hundred thousand, I mean a thousand dollars, eight, nine hundred thousand dollars back then, it was a lot of money. 
<clears throat> Long way to cross at Arkansas, though, and I so enjoyed Bootlegger's uh, Boy. And, uh, and there was some movie deals talking about Coach no, Wilson's latest they on that. No, they could not. I'm going to tell you, there was, uh, there was Hollywood writers or fiction writers, you know. All, right. They create, they want sensationalism, oh. they read the book. And I said, that wasn't in my book. Yeah. That wasn't in my book. I don't remember writing. Hell, I didn't do that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, uh, it's not that I didn't do that, but it wasn't in my book, you know. <laughs> so it's... Uh, it, it just didn't work out. They had two shots at it, and they had the Friday night. Molly Smith had the Friday Night Lights guys try to take two shots at it, right. and I was fortunate enough to be able to have in my contract, hey, I had to agree to the script and yeah. what was going because I'm leaving the legacy. And, 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 and basically, it came down to this: everyone that I talked to said it needs to be a documentary, it needs to be a, a ESPN type documentary yeah. if you're going to do the damn show or do the book and all. And uh, and not create some fiction, and that's what they weren't trying to do, sensationalizing. You, you know, when you look back at the times that uh, you came up through the ranks, what coach did you maybe uh, model yourself after or wanted to model yourself after? Uh, I know in, in my experience, why we always had that we played for somebody or that somebody was close to us. Who, who did you have that influenced well, they you? All, they all tutored you. You're part of your, your system and what you believe in your philosophy. It's all molded by those who are your mentors. And, you know, I, I was recruited under Jack Mitchell. I, and I went and played under Jack Mitchell, who's an All-American quarterback from at Oklahoma. And Jack's from our Kansas City, Kansas. And, and uh, actually, I went to his funeral when he passed away at 90-something years of age. And it was the same day Ricky Bryan, when I lost Ricky oh, Bryan from Tater Hill and Coeta, yeah. I took a plane and flew right from Ricky's to Jack Mitchell's service. But Jack recruited me, then I, actually I was recruited under Bowden Wyatt. And uh, he goes, takes his pickup truck and trades it in for that Cadillac they gave him, and he takes it to Tennessee after about two years <laughs> at Arkansas. And, and uh, uh, Jack comes in, then, the, you know, uh, Frank Broyles comes in, and uh, Frank Frank uh, had a good, in, a great influence on me. He was my coach, but the guy that I was close to was uh, Jim McKenzie. Jim McKenzie and I worked together, and we were so close. I believed in his philosophy, and he was a tough, hard nor it was dinosaur type coach, and. Uh, you know, not many of those guys left. Him and Pat James had played for Coach Bryant at Kentucky. They were a lot tougher physically and mentally than Frank was. Frank was a Georgia Tech guy. For, uh, he was a country club guy for Bobby Dodd in Atlanta, Georgia Tech. You know, we all kidded him about that. But Frank left all the disciplinary actions up to Wilson Matthews and Jim McKenzie. And, and that was, uh, you know, and so because of that influence, I always, uh, you know, adhered and stayed close to those guys. And, I had a lot of good mentors. I mean, you're around good people. When you're in a great program, you have an opportunity to be around a lot of good people, and you pick up a lot of different things. But So I would say McKenzie and those guys. I was with Doug Dickey. He tried to get me to go to Tennessee when he went to Tennessee. And Hayden Fry even tried to get me to go to SMU with him when he took the SMU job. But <laughs> but Frank had some good coaches around him, so I learned from a lot of things from a lot of good guys. Well, we're glad you stayed in Oklahoma. A lot more with Coach Sutter talking about some of his favorite players, favorite games, and, of course, some Dallas Cowboys stuff, too. But right now we'll take a break. We'll start with the greater Tulsa reporter and J.B. Haney. Let's talk about this group that does a good job in the local area here. Well, listen, when we talk about the GTR, you have to look at this one because this is one of, that goes around Owasso. And it has a very good story in there about Bill Blankenship and the fact that he won the second state championship for the Owasso Rams. I think you will enjoy it. And then I, I want to show you one more because the GTR it really does a good job of trying to bring everything out for the public to see. And uh, we have here Myron Noodleman. Now maybe you don't remember him, but if you went to any baseball game, you would remember how he would perform at the baseball games. Passed away recently and we just want to recognize him through the GTR. Sammy, I need your help with something. Oh, okay. Twas the night before Christmas, went all through the lot, not a salesman was stirring. They all said Sammy Caleb is really hot. No one ever said that, Sammy. The customers were nestled, all snug in their Hondas. While others hailed, Sammy is the strongest. Okay, this Christmas poem isn't working. Let's take a look at Happy Honda Day deals. Like 0.9% APR financing on the 2017 Pilot. Don Carlton Honda, family owned and operated for over 40 years. At Roger State University, we keep things personal. It all starts here. We make sure our graduates 
get the most out of their education. RSU has campuses in Claremore, Bartlesville, and Pryor, with on-campus housing and a wide variety of programs to suit your needs. It all starts here. Roger State University. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Remington Park is now officially open around the clock. That's right, we are 24-7. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna rock, rock, rock till broad daylight. We're gonna rock, gonna rock, gonna around the clock tonight. So when we say the party never ends, you better believe it. Remington Park, now open 24-7. Back with Barry Suits at Oklahoma Sports Scene. Coach, you're uh, prominent there at the Heisman Award ceremony presented to Baker Mayfield. Some of your thoughts on the ceremony on uh, Baker Mayfield. A little different from the olden days when they got a phone call. Steve Owen gets a phone call, and then, then Billy Sims got a phone call. In fact, they went on the wire, and this is back when they had Western Union. Remember, remember <laughs> Western Union? They sent you. But Billy Sims, someone, he's in the chow hall, someone comes in and just said, I just heard on the radio you won the Heisman. That's how Heisman, Billy found out about it. And uh, I've, had the, I've been to two Heisman ceremonies. I went to Sam's and I yeah. went to, to this one. And the only reason I went to this one was, I, I, you know, the first Tuesday of every December is the National Football Coaches Association meeting in the Hall of Fame in, uh, in New York. I always met the Waldorf ever since General uh, Eisen, not Eisenhower, General MacArthur right. spoke at it and he lived in the towers. So it's been there since the early 60s. Well, they've moved, it's Chinese about it, so they moved to New York Hilton now. So we were at the Hilton and I was fixing to come back after the, uh, the banquet and all, and Hal Smith calls me in the restaurateur sure. in Mahogany, he's, he's here in yeah. Tulsa too. So he calls me, says, I want to go to the Heisman, I need tickets, and I said, they're hard to get, small venue, da da da. He says, I'll fly you back, you stay, I'm flying, come up my jet, please stay, see if you can. So I call Rob Wilman uh, at uh, ESPN, who runs the, the deal, and I said, can you help us? And he said, yeah, if you stay, I'll get you two extra tickets. So I said, I'll stay. So that's the only reason I stayed is because they wanted me to, to get him tickets. So, and I didn't know they were going to sit me behind Baker, you know, and I really didn't. I was surprised. They, they had a sign seating. It's really a small venue. It's not very large at all. They call their PlayStation the Marriott Marquis. Great evening, great event. You know, Baker did well deserved. He, you know, it's uh, had a great career. Really you you great had to kind career. of coach him up with the uh, Fayetteville, Arkansas situation. Oh, yeah. Huh? I, yeah, that was neat. I, I, yeah, I was telling you all this story off there. I called it the, the, his representative, his lawyer. His dad was a coach with me at Arkansas. Steve White coached at Fort Smith High School and, uh, and with Wilson at Little Rock. But... Uh, he uh, is a lawyer, Bob. I remember him when he was a little kid. Well, he said everything's going to be okay. And I said, give me his number. So I called Baker's number, and Baker didn't answer because he imagined getting calls from everybody. So he didn't recognize my number probably, so I left him a message. I'm not calling each your butt out. I just want to know. Uh, what I want to know is, if it, is it changed any? Because I spent the night in there in 1958. <laughs> I want to know if that jail's improved any. I want you to tell me what it was like to be in that thing. I love your comment. The, the Fayetteville police would not have caught any of your wishbone no, quarterbacks. No, they wouldn't have caught me. They, they <laughs> <laughs> might catch Baker Bayfield, but they ain't going to catch my quarterbacks. <laughs> uh, what do you think about the Sooners' chances with, with Georgia? I think it's, uh, it's going to be a really interesting matchup. It's going to be a, a team that's kind of like our philosophy lined up when I was coaching, lined up and run the football, control the ball, control the clock, make their offense sit over on the bench and watch the game. And that's what Georgia will probably take that approach is they don't want Baker on the field. And I would want, not want that either. And uh, they run the ball uh, in that league a lot more. Uh, if we can stop the run, protect Baker, we'll light it up against him. Yeah. I really believe that. You know, when you take a look that uh, we've had six Heisman Trophy winners from Oklahoma, uh, Oklahoma University, right. and four of them were from the state of Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. That always just jumps out at me. Three in the last century, three in this century. Right. That uh, just speaks great. For the state, and you're a part of well, that. Well, it's, it's the program. You know, we, Oklahoma's fortunate to be able to have a great product to sell. We get great, good players come to Oklahoma. You know, and no one slams the door in Oklahoma's face when they come knocking. People open the door, and they're, they're welcomed in. And that's the reason they have a, six Heisman Trophy winners, because they were all highly recruited, and they were good players. And uh, I, mean, I, I can't say that, Baker. He's a pretty walk-on, isn't he? Isn't that amazing? Twice. But, but yeah. I'm going to tell you, the, the problem you have with that, though, is the 85 scholarship one yeah. today. Yeah. I mean, yeah, there's so many good players out there, and especially, and I was talking to a pro scout the other day. I was visiting with Tom Siskowski at the Cowboys, 
and I was talking about uh, the, uh, Aitman at uh, uh, OSU, that basketball, six foot four, good hands, yeah. vertical. It's a question of how fast he'll run. Everybody's playing four wide receivers, and there's so many in the draft, there's so many to evaluate. It all comes down to speed and uh, things like that where they'll be taken, and there's just so many of them. But they'll all get a chance. If you're a pretty good player, they'll, they'll bring you to camp. You gotta prove it then. Where do you think uh, Baker will go in the draft? Who? Uh, Baker? Baker. He really, but Tom and I were talking about this the other day. Skowski, he's from Oklahoma, and he's heads up the Cowboys recruiting. He, he's, he thinks he's really helped himself. You know, he's a first day guy. And uh, some, someone had bet him, he told me someone had bet him he wouldn't go in the first three rounds. And, and he says he's, he'll be up there. Now, I don't know who the top quarterbacks are. I don't even know who the one, two, or three guys they got rated. Baker's a winner, and uh, they've got guys playing in the league that are shorter than him. You know, they've won Super Bowl. Two of them won Super Bowls. So, you know, it, Baker's a great competitor, and uh, he's, uh, you know, he's, his charisma, his enthusiasm, he's the best cheerleader on the field. He elevates the defense, the offense, everybody's play. And he's so accurate, he's so confident, he throws the ball into places. A lot of other play, quarterbacks wouldn't attempt to throw it. And he just throws it in there. He, he's very accurate, great velocity, sees the field. Turkey jerky scramble. He's yeah. spastic looking when he runs, but <laughs> hard to get down, hard to get a hold of, Coach, hard to guard. Coach, uh, three years there, 73 to 88 with the Sooners. So many great players, so many great games, but uh, somebody jump out at me. I'm thinking, of course, that Ohio State game with Von Schaumann and uh, uh, some of my favorites, uh, some great games. Uh. Well, you know, what? Von Schaumann always brings up that fact that, you know, that's probably one of the biggest plays of your career, Coach. And I look at Von Schaumann and I always say, Von <laughs> Schaumann? I'm glad you're on the plane. I'm glad you're there to kick the kick. But if Thomas Lott hadn't pulled his hamstring, Billy hadn't got hurt in the first quarter, we'd go hang half a hundred on him. <laughs> we already had him down 20 to nothing when they got hurt. And then on, we turned the ball over every damn down, every series. <clears throat> and then the Selman family, of course. I oh, can't help but think right. of the Selman. You know, I'm going to give you a statistic, and that's one of the goals. You know, we're going to get eventually. You talk about the Heisman trophies. Right. I'm going to. Selman statue on the campus Absolutely. because all not three. just the great players, but the family and oh. who they represent, what, Class. what they are, all graduated, all consensus, all Americans, uh, just wonderful people. And that when they played at Oklahoma, they did something that's never happened before or, or since and never will. Three brothers play at the same time, start side by side and accomplish what they did. You know their record, when a Selman played at Oklahoma, was 54-3-1. And, and the three teams that we lost to, we were better than, we helped them win. You know what I mean? We just, out of all 58, 59 games, you screw up, you know what I mean? And help the other team. But we could have easily won 59 games with the Selmans playing. But of course, they, they had pretty good, Rod Scholl and Jim Bow and the rest of those guys around them, little Joe and that crew. I was looking at the uh, game the other day with Joe. 1975 Oklahoma game, Pittsburgh, Tony Dorsett was, uh, was there as a junior. He wins the Heisman, they're national champions the next year. But we, they were undefeated, we were undefeated. We kicked the devil out of them yeah, there. Yeah. Dorsett carried the ball 13 times for 17 yards. Is that when Scott game. Hill nailed him? Oh, yeah, he got nailed, but yeah. he only made 17 <laughs> yards a day. Tony told me it was the worst performance he's ever had in any field. He's always made over 100 yards. Yeah, sure. But what happens in that ball game, six backs started in the NFL that played in Oklahoma. On that uh -huh. game, Joe and I were counting up the, the players that played in that backfield that day Six of them started in the NFL. Guys, okay, so we're Dallas Cowboys, 1994-97, of course, Super Bowl champions of 96. What was it like in the pros, Coach? No, it's nothing like the – you know, pros is big business. You know, it's yeah. about you, – you bring a kid in, you know, you only got 53. You might be on the waiver wire the next day, and you don't even know where the hell he is, you know, the rest of your life. Yeah. College coaches, you got kids four or five years. You got them 24-7. You know their passions, their goals, where they're from. You know what they want to be, you, and your job is to try to help them be that, be a productive citizen the next 30, 40, 50 years of living. College, I mean, pro football is a billion dollar business. It's about winning the Super Bowl, about yeah. getting that, and that's all it's about. And uh, so it's, it, in a lot of ways, it's impersonal. You always heard the, you know, Coach Lander yell, well, 13, come over here, and what, number 12, come over here, you know, like it, they didn't, he didn't even know my name. <laughs> well, how important was to know your name? You might not, you probably weren't there next week <laughs> anyway, right. you know. <laughs> So, uh, oh, man. Yeah, well, we got a lot different. more coach. Some questions uh, you guys have sent in for us. You'll us will be in the next section coming up. Right now for Bricktown Brewery, they'll want to talk about some of their uh, special Bricktown Twisted Comfort Foods. In addition to their menu, they have these very special appetizers you'll enjoy, including, how about this, chicken fried ribs. St. Louis style ribs, battered than chicken fried, served with mac and cheese. Can't beat that. Pepperoni pizza, mac and cheese as well. 
And this one, uh, one of my wife Becky's favorites, extreme grilled cheese and tomato soup. It's American pepper cheddar Swiss, some kind of fancy uh, thing I can't say. Mounted on grilled bread and served with Sam, uh, San Marzano tomato soup topped with pretzel croutons. How can you beat that, huh? Bricktown Brewery, go there and enjoy. Much more with the Coach Switzer right after this. Get employee pricing right now at Route 66 Chevrolet. That's right, get employee pricing on the 2017 Chevy Colorado, Suburban, Traverse, and even the Silverado and Tahoe. Employee pricing on all 2017 models. And that's not all. Get 20% off the Chevy Cruze, Sonic, and Spark or get 0% for 72 months. Jim Glover Chevrolet is now Route 66 Chevrolet, I-44 Memorial, or Route66Chevy.com. The holidays are here. Enjoy a taste of the season with the new holiday sandwich at Billy Sims Barbecue. Fresh cut turkey, slow smoked on site each day, then piled high with savory cornbread dressing and Billy Sims signature cranberry Q sauce. Available for a limited time at Billy Sims Barbecue. And don't forget to make the upcoming holiday season special with slow smoked turkeys and spiral cut hams from Billy Sims Barbecue. Celebrate your home today at Bowen's Discount Carpet for our shop and compare sale. Take advantage of our guaranteed lowest prices you can find. Great deals on new Shaw floors and a huge variety of brands and colors that you will have to see to believe. Let Shaw floors spice up your space along with 36 years of experience and the beauty of your floors will shine. Come out to Bowen's where we refuse to be undersold. Well, Coach, you've had a tremendous career in college and in the pros. Um, what are you doing these days? I uh, live in Norman. I live on campus, University of Oklahoma. I, I have five dogs at home. I don't know what the city ordinance is, but <laughs> we're in Tulsa. I can talk about it. I don't <laughs> but I, I walk my dogs on campus, and uh, uh, I live right across the street from the Tried Elton Pi Fi House, a couple of fraternities. I don't know who the hell they are, no care. <laughs> and, uh, but I, I enjoy it. I've been there for 52 years in Norman. I came there, it was 30,000 people, it was about 125,000 today, and that's home. And uh, all my children were born there, and got a little bunch of grandkids, seven that live there, three in Tennessee. And, but I, I, I work, Becky and my wife, uh, we work at a foundation. I have GroundZeroSavesLives.com. It's, it's about search and rescue dogs uh, to save lives. Uh, we have a lot of natural disasters in Oklahoma and around the country. And, First responders are deployed, and we went to Harvey, and we went to, you know, you go anywhere that they need dogs to save lives. And uh, if you have destruction, and uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great cause, and hopefully we'll build a campus on the total of Oklahoma. And the karma of that is that I found out after I got 200 acres acquired in total Oklahoma to build a campus for the emergency training center where these first responders can hone their skills, and the dogs uh, can, is that, uh, Tuttle is the home of Alfred P. Murray, Murrah, the wow. judge of the Murrah Mountain Building, sure. was blown up. And I did not know that yeah. when we acquired it, but that's where he was from. Haven't I seen you ride a bicycle over to the stadium and stuff? Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm six or seven hundred yards from the stadium. I know it. Yeah, I'd huh? ride a golf cart or whatever. <laughs> <He's from. laughs> Hitchhike, walking, really. I could really well, walk yeah. over. Well, <laughs> you got my curiosity. What kind of dogs do you have? I have four German Shepherds in a lab, and but the search and rescue dogs are basically labs and Belgian Malinois. They're more athletic, quicker, and agility, and run over rubble. German Shepherds are too smart. They walk around and smell hey, it. And trust me, he, the labs he, run across them. He has some mean <laughs> damn dogs, though, too. No, they're not mean. Yeah, they, they just don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Basketball time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, in, in basketball, this is kind of interesting that uh, you have suddenly taken off and become a big oh, basketball boy, fan. Oh, that Trey Young is something. He's the only player I've ever seen that is better than what they said he was. <laughs> yeah. I said, you guys are wrong about him. Hey, he's better than what y'all said. Yeah, it's, it's been a really a great thing. Lon Kruger is a heck of a foot, uh, basketball coach, and uh, he's doing a great job. And uh, But this kid here and the other kid that mock was the Manning, kid. Mock, yeah, Brady Manning. Mack, he, Brady he's Manning. a good player, too. Yeah. But uh, Both freshmen, but yeah. this this freshman, he's going to be player of the year, and he's 
I don't know how in the world we can keep him. He, he'll be out of there. <laughs> he'll lead the nation in every category and be gone. Be worth a lot of money. Yeah, he again for the third time this season already has been named the Big 12 Player of the Week. Again, with that great winner with number three, Wichita. Coach has some questions uh, sent in from some viewers. Uh, from Keith, does uh, Coach Switzer regret not coaching OU another two to five years? How long would you have stayed? Uh, I don't know. The things that happened at the end of my career, it was time for me to go. It really was. No one ever asked me to leave. I wasn't fired. I had an interim president at that time. I had four regents. And like I, I've always said, you know, when you got a, only seven regents, you got four of them for you, you don't have to worry about it. No, <laughs> so I had a poll of that many. So I just thought it was the right time. There was too much negative pressure and, uh, and national publicity on the program. And I said, hey, it's better for the program. I can go on. I can do something else. I wasn't one of those guys that couldn't, you know, had to coach, you know what I mean? I've seen so many coaches get out of coaching, right. they got to get back in it. Well, I'm, I never was that way. I could do other things. Well, one of only three coaches, by the way, to win a national championship and a Super Bowl. So here's one from Tyler. Uh, how would Baker Mayfield do running your wishbone offense back in the day? Well, he didn't fit my playbook. You know, it's, it's, it, it's a lot, there's no magic playbooks. You know, yeah. it, it's what philosophy you believe in. And I, you know, I, obviously I was a wishbone guy and I, my quarterbacks have to run the football. That's why I said when police at Fayetteville caught Baker, they never would have caught my quarterbacks. <laughs> and that's, uh, I need speed and quickness and running ability. And, and, and if you forget how good some of them were, all you got to do is go back and look at the 80s and 70s. Oh, and the, yeah. Go back in the 80s and watch uh, Charles Thompson, Jermail Holloway. Those guys run the, uh, Eric Mitchell run the football at quarterback. And then you realize, hey, there is a difference. And they were hard to get a hold of, great quickness. What's that record, play. rushing record? Never going to be touched. No, it'll never yeah. be broken because no one thought runs a football yeah, anymore. Well, like we, we had 472 yards a game for 11 games, <laughs> you know, and we set the national record on total offense back in too, but we didn't throw about 80 yards a game. So you know, we didn't ever throw the football. We just controlled the ball for 42 minutes a game. You got it 28, I got it 42, yeah. and your defense is tired, and I hang half a hundred on you. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yep. What do you think uh, uh, in the future, Barry, and all this concussion stuff out there and everything, uh, how do you look at football? I know there's numbers well, down in youth football. And well, it, it is. It's affected the game. A lot of parents are concerned and are keeping the players out of a great game. You learn so many, you know, there is a risk. We all know that. It's a violent physical game and it's, uh, it's it, it got to be played that way. You can't play coach caution in the football. You got, you got to go out there. You got to have 11 guys on defense. The guy got the ball. You're rushing the passer. You're going to make the play. You got to be all out. And that's the only way you play the game. There is a risk, and always. And everybody that plays the game knows that. They accept that. It might not be written down or they might sign a waiver, but every parent, every player knows that, especially at the, the collegiate le high school and the collegiate level and pro level. Well, Coach, as a professional, you know, you always get paid for your appearances. So we have something for you coming from Norman, Oklahoma, to Tulsa. Okay. We're, very, we're very proud of our Bricktown Brewer. And uh, you'll be able to have dinner. This is it, Bricktown. We got one of those right down in downtown, right, right across from New Hall of Fame down exactly. there. Sport, right. Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame right downtown. downtown. That's right. Yeah, it's neat. Yeah, well, it's thank neat. You, well I thank you guys. Can't thank you enough yeah. for making the trip up here to spend there, some time with us. Got, you got one in there. That's right. That's right. for you, Coach. Yeah, sure. How about that? Yeah. Right there. Take Becky out and enjoy. Hey, my, my talent fee. That's right. <laughs> we'll be back with more on Oklahoma's uh, sports scene brought to you by Coach's favorite restaurant, Bricktown Brewery. Thanks, Coach. Good guy, hey, Enjoy guys. It. Enjoy Thanks, it. Coach. Get employee pricing right now at Route 66 Chevrolet. That's right. Get employee pricing on the 2017 Chevy Colorado, Suburban, Traverse, and even the Silverado and Tahoe. Employee pricing on all 2017 models. And that's not all. Get 20% off the Chevy Cruze, Sonic, and Spark or get 0% for 72 months. Jim Glover Chevrolet is now Route 66 Chevrolet, I-44 Memorial, or Route66Chevy.com.
Rick Tom Brewery's Oklahoma Sports Scene welcomes in the head football coach of Booker T. Washington High School, Brad Caleb. The, as you see, the gold ball champion of 6A2. What a season, JV. Unbelievable season, but what I'm wondering, did you have a visit with Coach Switzer when he went out and maybe some of the players that you have, maybe they gave a compliment about going to OU? Uh, yes, actually we did. We talked about Dax Hill a little bit, and he said one of the assistant coaches told him that he saw one of the best defensive teams that he's seen in a long time, and, and he, he uh, talked about Dex Hill. I'm like, yeah, he's, <laughs> he's probably one of the best around here. So, yeah, we had a little conversation. Brad, how did he miss on you? I mean, you became a college football Hall of Fame quarterback at East Central. Why did you not become a Sooner when Brady Switzer came to you? Well, you know, uh, you know, I, I graduated in 81, and, of course, that's my dream was going to – wanted to go to OU. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, I got offered, and at the time was Proctor was the coach. Bobby Proctor. Yes, yeah. and uh, I just told him, you know, I have a twin brother and a cousin that my childhood dream was to, to play at – play together and uh, was there any option of them getting scholarship and they said no and and we journeyed to East Central University which probably the best thing ever happened I married a, the most beautiful lady in the world Darlene Caleb. She's a pretty good coach too, isn't she? Probably yes. the best coach in the house. Yes. <laughs> I will agree to that. Yeah. Yes. No she, argument. No, no argument. She's been that girls basketball coach is Paul. How, how long now has she been? Uh, I think this is her 12th to 13th wow, year. An assistant yes. athletic director. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. What do you look forward to? Uh, you had a great year. Uh, kids came on. Didn't lose a game in Oklahoma, uh, which is a fantastic record. Uh, what do you look for coming next year? Uh, I, I, I look to, to repeat. Uh, we got a lot of great kids coming back. Uh, we got to fill some uh, voids with our seniors uh, defensively. I think we got seven coming back, and I think. We got six coming back uh, on offense, so, uh, but we got some people to, to, to fill those voids. So um, uh, our quarterback situation will be something that we uh, got to look at, and, but we got two uh, quarterback I think can fill that void. So uh, we're looking for good things. Uh, I think we'll be uh, <clears throat> uh, probably seated number one coming in, and uh, we just got to kind of put it all together in spring and come into fall. But uh, what do you think uh, as the prospects that you have now? Have you, will you have a lot of kids sign this year, or do you think? You know? uh, probably uh, we don't have extensive um, amount of D1 players. We got a lot of D2 players uh, that will sign. I'll say maybe about five or six will probably go uh, and play small college football, which is, I told them, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You can get your education paid for. Uh, next year group is probably my, going to be my biggest, you know, Dax Hill is probably the most uh, uh, popular uh, player that I've been around in, in 27 years. Uh, I had some good ones at Jinx, but this guy just on another level, uh, being a junior and getting recruited by everybody in, in, in the nation. Uh, I just looked at the final four with the college. Three of those four has offered him. You know, Clemson is the only one that have offered him. So. Uh, uh, so we got all those guys coming back. So uh, I'm looking for a very good year next year. Talk, talk about that. How does that affect the other, the younger student athletes to see those people on your campus and everything? I, I think it's more entertaining for my uh, my counselors and my principals <laughs> than anything. Uh, you know, it just shows uh, the credibility of Booker T. Washington with the uh, the legacy they've been having for years. I mean, it's, it's a lot of people who came through there. Felix Jones and. Uh, Meachums and 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 uh, uh, or you know McQuarters, so uh, it, it's just a bunch of kids that are that type caliber athletes are coming through again, and uh, uh, it's it's been exciting. I mean, with Urban Myers and you know Lincoln Riley and, and those guys coming through, uh, so it's uh, been a lot of excitement on Booger T. Washington campus here the last three weeks. How, how about the helicopter coach? <laughs> that uh, I, have, Gundy. I have never seen that in my life. Uh, he was supposed to pose a land on our field, but I guess his helicopter uh, generated heat going down, so he didn't want to mess up our field, so he landed on our grass field, and it was the smallest helicopter I've ever seen in my life. Uh, he stayed about two hours. I mean, he took pictures, and uh, he was very interested in two of our players, uh, Dax and uh, J.J. Hester. and. Uh, 
uh, and uh, Irvin Myers came in before him because he didn't want to go through. He told me it's, it's a circus act. He, he didn't want to go through that, so he came in earlier. And uh, but yeah, it's it's been some uh, uh, big time uh, name coaches in, in that profession come through here lately. That's great. And hey, when you have coaches like that come in, that's got to have a tremendous impact on your players as well as the coaching staff. Yes, I mean, I mean, I got a lot of players that you know. Uh, when you see those type of caliber coaches come on campus, they they get excited, and 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 that shows the credibility of Booger T. Washington, the quality of that athletes that go through there. And uh, like I said, I got maybe about three or four caliber D1 athletes that's coming back next year, and. Uh, uh, and um, um, so I'm looking for big things. So uh, early signing date they have this year, December 20th. It's kind of changed the, the game a lot. Uh, we won't have any this year, but next year we'll probably be a possibility that we might have some. So, yeah, it's been exciting. It's well, been Coach Kev, you got a gold ball. we got something even better than the gold ball, don't we, Right Coach? here at Bricktown <laughs> Brewery, we've got a gift card for $25. There so you go, Coach. If you want to take us to dinner tonight, that's fine. <laughs> well, thank you. Or thank you. I'll see you at the board meeting. Okay. okay. <laughs> thank you. Back to back. Do it again, huh, Coach? Yes, sir. Back Congratulations to the Thank you. Well done. Booker D. Washington, head football coach, Brad Kemp, the 6A2 state champions of Oklahoma. Another uh, mention of Bricktown Brewery. We talked about those uh, special twisted comfort foods. Here's my favorite. Boom Boom Shrimp Poor Boy, oh yeah. Boom Boom Shrimp, shredded lettuce, mayonnaise, tomato slices, and I mean they got some sausage, slap your mama. Served on French bread with fries, can't beat that. And a barbecue band, what how the hell they call it? BBQ something, yeah, it's good. Ham, pork, Swiss cheese, mustard, barbecue sauce, pickles, served on French bread with fries, just part of their twisted comfort foods. Get to Bricktown Brewery, you'll enjoy it. And uh, if you get on the show here, we'll give you, give you a gift card. Back with Remington Parks wrap up. They just finished their thoroughbred season. Dale Day is going to be joining us right after this. See me? I need your help with something. Oh, okay. Twas the night before Christmas, went all through the lot. Not a salesman was stirring. They all said Sammy Caleb is really hot. No one ever said that, Sammy. Right. The customers were nestled, all snug in their Hondas. While others hailed Sammy is the strongest. Okay, this Christmas poem isn't working. Let's take a look at Happy Honda Day deals. Like 0.9% APR financing on the 2017 Violet. Don Carlton Honda, family owned and operated for over 40 years. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Remington Park is now officially open around the clock. That's right, we are 24-7. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna Better believe it. Remington Park, now open 24-7. Back on Oklahoma Sports Scene, brought to you by Bricktown Brewery, but also we should say, I guess, skill by Remington Park as well. And Dale Day, the voice of racing at Remington Park, here with us today. Dale, yeah, great to have you with us. And just wrapping up the thoroughbred meet, give us some of the numbers and what kind of meet you have. You had a big day on Sunday. Big day uh, to wrap things up, December 17th. It was Springboard Mile Day. The Springboard's our top two-year-old race. And, of course, two-year-olds this time of the year are getting set to turn three on January 1. And they're looking to get going towards the Kentucky Derby. And the Springboard Mile, after a number of years, is now recognized by Churchill Downs and the Kentucky Derby as a Kentucky Derby points eligibility race. So the first four finishers of that, of that race have points on their resume, all trying to build up to try and qualify for the Kentucky Derby because the top 18 by points get in to the Kentucky Derby right. field. So uh, Gravy Toss, the winner of the Springboard Mile, which I think I called three or four different names, but that's all right. If, like I said, if he gets the Kentucky Derby, right, then yeah. I'll feel a little yeah. more upset about it. But he was impressive, had the outside post, number 12, in a field of 12, going only a mile, had to hustle to get out to avoid being hung out five, eight, seven, six, seven wide. But he had a Hall of Fame jockey on his back. Victor Espinosa, three-time winner of the yeah. Kentucky Derby. That didn't hurt. He knew what he was doing, let the horse do the work after that. Wins it by almost three lengths. So uh, he picks up 10 points for the Kentucky Derby. We'll see if it turns out well for him uh, first Saturday in May next year. Well, let's take a look at him coming down the stretch. Here's Dale Day's call of uh, the big race down there. It's the Springboard Mile. Take a look at the horse on the lead, the gray. By three, Gravitos after six furlongs, one minute, 11.71. It's Gravitos by four. Combatant chasing second. Major Brown after that, believing a royalty, a distant fourth, and then trying to chug along. Here's Kingsville moving up. A lot of work for everybody except Gravitos out by three. Combatant trying to cut into the margin late, but it's going to be Gravitos in the springboard mile to win it by three. Gravitos on top. Combatant. 
So Gravitas wins the springboard mile. Take a look at the big gray coming down the stretch. And what's impressive to me, Dale, again, the quality of racing people we attract. Mm -hmm. To get a Hall of Fame jockey, Victor Espinosa, he must like this two-year-old. At least he's shopping right now this time of year. First time he's ever been to Remington Park. He's won three Kentucky Derbies. He rode California Chrome. He rode the Triple Crown winner, American Pharaoh. He's towards the end of his career. He's been contemplating retirement because he's pretty much done everything now. But he's still active, picks up a nice two-year-old in California, the only jockey on this horse. Comes into Oklahoma City to ride, likes it, wins it, and uh, look for bigger things from them. In the Springboard Mile on December 17th, there were seven Kentucky Derby trophies in that race. Doug O'Neill, the trainer, has two. His jockey, Mario Gutierrez, Gutierrez, excuse me, two, and then Victor Espinosa with three. So the quality has picked up uh, immensely over the years. It's taken time to build things at Remington Park, but it's definitely going up, 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 and now we're being nationally recognized, which is a great thing. Who were the leaders this year, the, the trainers and jockeys? Trainer Steve Aspewson, he won his 13th training title at Remington Park. Hall of Fame he, he's a Hall of Fame trainer. Yeah. People forget he won his first training title at Remington Park uh, back in the early 1990s. Kind of got his start here and in Minnesota, then he exploded in the mid 90s, and it's the rest is history. Uh, leading jockey Ramon Vasquez, fifth consecutive season for him to win. And then leading owners Danny Caldwell, he won his eighth consecutive uh, leading owner title and ninth overall Danny Caldwell of Poto, Oklahoma, former high school coach uh, down in Southeast Oklahoma. Coach Hayden, look, 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 the quarter horses. Well, yeah, the quarter horses are because it seems to me like I can remember back before racing was legal. And we had quarter horse racing kind of out in the country. And uh, I became very, very fond of it. How good is it now in Oklahoma City? Best quarter horse meet in the country, period. Los Alamitos in Southern California is well known. They run year round, so it's kind of a long season if you want to look at it that way. Ours is more concise, starts March 9th, 2018, wraps up first Saturday in June. And for 50 days, basically, you've got the best of the best in one spot. And uh, a lot of them will go on to battle at Rio de Oso Downs in New Mexico, trying to win the All-American Futurity and All-American Derby. Some have in recent years, So, uh, but kind of starts off in Oklahoma City for the Corridor game, which is really a good thing for us. And the night of December 15th was really a special night. Some really special people that went into the Oklahoma Horse Racing Hall of Fame. Uh, trainers, jockeys, owners, uh, again, great night there. And the first broadcaster ever put in, <laughs> right, uh, yes. Chris Lincoln, went in on that Friday night as well. <laughs> yes, my wife Becky said, aren't you the only one broadcasting horse racing? So I don't know. <laughs> that's, that's a great line. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, no, we were proud to induct you, Chris, uh, oh, longtime cool. Oklahoma resident, Oklahoma Horse Racing Hall of Fame at Remington Park, definitely deserving of everything you've done over the years, decades in horse racing uh, on various networks, ESPN primarily, and uh, everybody remembers those. So well-deserving, and you had a nice uh, crew around you, uh, some top uh, yeah, right. breeder, owner, trainer, C.R. Trout. He has a small operation, but he has broodmares that they just crank out winners. He won a couple more races yesterday uh, to wrap up the season. Luis Canones, uh, only the third jockey in Remington history to win over 1,000 races. He's he got approaching. hurt that night. Was he okay? Yeah, dislocated his thumb. Oh, I thought he broke his life. arm, but he was okay. Yeah. He came back and won Good. a couple on closing day. Good. He's approaching 4,000 career wins. Wow. Uh, Joe Offholder, trainer, and then three top horses. Caleb's Posse won a Breeders' Cup uh, Dirt Mile a few years back, won the Clever Trevor at Ramington. She's all in, only the second female Oklahoma bred. Dr. Z's, right? Dr. Robert Z's Zolder. horse. Uh, Tulsa, yeah. He didn't bring his cheering crew. I was a little disappointed. Yeah, it just, he, yeah. The she's all in cheer that they used to do every time she would win a race, uh, which I think was 11 times at Remington yeah. Park. They basically took the place over. But she's only the second female Oklahoma bred to win a million dollars in her yeah, career. Lady yeah. Secret was the other one. But yeah. she's all in actually raced in Oklahoma, which was uh, very good. And then Oki Ride, top Oklahoma bred sprinter, also went in. It was a big night for the Hall of Fame. Thank you, Dale. You know, Dale, we got something here that I know you're going to like because you have one right in Remington Absolutely, Park. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> we got this $25 gift card for you, and hope you enjoy that. And uh, go somewhere else other than the, the well, place of work. Well, I will take at, at least my wife. Maybe my kids will tag along as well. They occasionally do. I don't know. They, I can't keep up with the menu. They're always messing it around and moving, trying new things. Yeah. They get something you really like, and they take it away for a little bit so you'll like it even more when it comes back. Yeah. They do a cheeseburger inside a grilled cheese sandwich which is nothing but good for you, of course. Of course yeah. And it is awesome. It's a little messy, but it's great. Hey, give my best to Scott Wells, all the gang at Remington, fabulous. And hungry for dessert, Bricktown Brewery has desserts now. You've got to try these. The Big Cookies Little Milk, again, one of Becky's favorites. Huge choice of two big warm cookies, chocolate chip or peanut butter. Then you get that little small, really cold milk. Pint glass Oreo Sunday is quite a treat. Vanilla ice cream coach, chocolate syrup. Caramel, crushed Oreos, walnuts, and if you want to kick it up, they have a spicy caramel sauce. And then coming down the stretch here, chocolate bunt cake. Serve one with a little ice cream, you raspberry sauce, cutting that thing, and the chocolate streams everywhere. It's incredible. 
definitely save room for desserts if you possibly can at Bricktown Brewery. Back with our parting shots right after this. Get employee pricing right now at Route 66 Chevrolet. That's right, get employee pricing on the 2017 Chevy Colorado, Suburban Traverse, and even the Silverado and Tahoe. Employee pricing on all 2017 models. And that's not all. Get 20% off the Chevy Cruze, Sonic, and Spark or get 0% for 72 months. Jim Glover Chevrolet is now Route 66 Chevrolet, I-44 Memorial, or Route66Chevy.com. One, two, three o'clock, four o'clock, rock. Five, six, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, rock. Nine, ten, eleven o'clock, twelve o'clock, rock. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. Remington Park is now officially open around the clock. That's right, we are 24-7. We're gonna rock around the clock tonight. We're gonna Better believe it. Remington Park, now open 24-7. Our Oklahoma sports scene is coming down the stretch as a horse racing metaphor. Now for a basketball one, let's tip it off with Gil Cloud. I really want to uh, encourage everyone to come to the Tournament of Champions. It's the oldest running basketball tournament in the state of Oklahoma. This will be the 53rd edition. Also want to congratulate all those high school football teams across the state of Oklahoma who won state championships this year. Everybody goes, the 480 members of the Activities Association that play competitive athletics. Uh, as we go into the winter break, uh, I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas, a Happy New Year, and uh, I hope that you'll come and see a high school basketball game. I'd like to spend just a second here and thank Barry Switzer because what a great job he did with us here today and the fact that he was 15 years the head coach at the University of Oklahoma, four years as the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys, and yet when he talks football today, if you can't get excited, I was ready to go play just listening to him because he is uh, just that influential when it comes to what he does with football. And the way he recruited in the state of Oklahoma, it made no difference how large the school was, how economic the kids were, but he was able to get good players, and he was close to them, and he has remained close to them all of their life. Great to have Barry Switzer with us. Hey, by the way, I want to remind you, it's hockey time in Oklahoma. You might have forgotten the Tulsa Oilers. That's because who goes on a six-week road trip? Is that unbelievable? They played November 5th, and they were gone on the road for six straight weeks, their last home game back on November the 4th. Well, they finally returned December 15th and 16th. Their record 4-5-2-2 two two on that long, long road trip. Featured, though, a number of injured players and a, really a health issue with their head coach, who was, of course, one of our guests here at the sports scene, Rob Murray. Coach Murray collapsed on the bench with a blood clot in his lung back on November 17th in Quad City. Well, he's recovered, so is the team. They're back down. The Oilers have games on the 19th, the 22nd, the 23rd. Return to the BLK to get, take on the Kansas City Mavericks, December 27th, 29th, and 30th. So get out, support the Oilers hockey team. Good to have them back after a six-week road trip. All right, guys, coming up on the next show, which will be our first one of the new year, 2018, January the 10th, we'll have a wrap-up of the College Football National Championship, hopefully talking about Oklahoma versus whoever, Clemson or Alabama, and have a, hopefully have a special guest to follow up with that. And our December uh, Route 66 Chevrolet Oklahoma Prep Player and Coach Award. We'll have, of course, our buddy Harry Harrison here from Route 66, uh, probably Barry Lewis or Mike Brown from the Tulsa World to announce that. Jeff Metters, longtime friend of mine, fabulous job as the voice of the National Finals Rodeo. Just wrapped up in Las Vegas. He'll be here in a Special Olympics Winter Game Preview. All coming up on our first visit in 2018 on Oklahoma Sports. And from all of us, happy holidays and happy New Year.